Alberta is a leader in a lot of the sorry statistics in terms of having the highest rate of domestic violence. It's really quite sad. This last year at our shelter has been extremely high. We have been full pretty much the whole year. It makes you sad and it makes you disappointed and it makes you frustrated, but it, it is reality. We have a great platform to be able to go out there and say, not only is this wrong, but here's how things should be. People think it's always kind of happening back doors, not a lot going on. But once you see the statistics, it is jaw dropping. ACWS has been working with men and boys to end violence against women for probably a decade and had a long association with uh, uh, Jackson Katz, who's uh, developed the curriculum with us. Players from both the Stampeders and the Eskimos train together, and it's a really hands-on, interactive type of training. The stuff that we're going to talk about is not necessarily easy, but it's something that needs to be talked about. The reality is it's a part of our, our society and a part of our cult culture that needs to change. The training sessions were, were awesome. It was something that we were all very excited about getting involved with. It just definitely uh, opened my eyes and my vision. You know, I have a daughter and, and a wife and, and how I approach them and, and other women that are around, you know, and, and understand that uh, words matter. We found at the end of the first day, we had gone over by an hour and a half because nobody wanted to leave. We wanted to learn more. It's been great working with both teams, and both teams have selected absolutely stellar players to work with us. They're doing an amazing job with the kids. Been, I think, very moving for everybody who's been involved, and I think in some ways really life-changing. So you guys sit up here and you see, oh, you know, this guy's a big football player, you know, two-time Grey Cup champion. But me, as a kid, I was a victim of domestic violence. Whereas I used to come home every night and hear my mom getting beat by my father. And I heard her yelling. It was physical. It was emotional. It's tough for a little kid sitting in this room trying to figure out how can you help your mom? And I can't do anything. One night, she pack up me, my brother, and my sister, and we drive two days to drive to Seattle, Washington. And we ended up in a shelter in Seattle. Women go through this all the time, every day. But I was blessed with an opportunity to be a part of the solution. I want to show that anybody can make it out of it. If I did, you guys can. It's all right for me, because if I can help one, one person, job is well done. Let's be honest, 74%, that's terrible. If I was to go stand over here and draw a line, everybody on that side of the gym, that's 74%. That's how many people either have been or know somebody that has been a, a victim of domestic violence. It's the worst in Canada, and we're better than that. We all gotta stand together and make a change. Some of the kids, you know, have already talked about it. After the first session, they were talking about it. The second session, they were talking about it again. So I think it is making a difference. The three main ones, we got verbal, physical, and sexual. Give me some verbal ones. I don't know, like they're fat. There you go, right there. Tell them they fat. There you go. Giving them orders. You do this, because I said do it, and you have to do it. Ignoring somebody? Ignoring. My grandma, my mom would say was, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words will never hurt. You guys heard that? Yeah. Words hurt, don't they? Because if you hear something consistently over and over and over and over again, you start to believe it. What are some of physical? Pushing or shoving? Pushing or shoving. Getting in somebody's face? Yeah. You like when I'm all up in your grill? <laughs> no? <laughs> no? These are some forms of abuse. This list can go on and on. But we get to a point where we only see these three things and then we forget about those and be like, nah, not really. But it is. It's been kind of a big part of my life. And so to hear that um, people are talking about it now so that we don't get in ourselves into situations where um, we're in unhealthy relationships is really helpful. 
If you just open your eyes and look around, you can see that it is a big issue. This is incredibly important for our entire society. This is something that benefits everybody to get this message out. I can't change, you know, the things that happened to me as a kid in the past, but I can help a kid who's going through it right now. I just want to be able to empower kids to know that, you know, it's, it's not the end, you know. We can start right now. There are likely people in this room who have an issue or know somebody or are experiencing at home. And we will leave uh, some information behind uh, for you uh, in terms of different contacts and information in case you need any kind of help or looking to support a friend and are not quite sure what to do. Everyone can play a role in ending violence against women and girls. If people are prepared to join with the players, join with ACWS to lead change, we can have a significant impact uh, on the community. And this is kind of the start gives you a little bit of an idea of what's going on, what to look for even. Maybe you guys haven't experienced it, but it's something that you will experience. I can promise you that much. We're helping them understand this is where things need to go, and you can change. They don't have to stay that way. Leading change, that's exactly what we're doing. For information on the Leading Change Inspired Communities model and how to implement it in your community, contact the Alberta Council of Women's Shelters, 1-800-273-8255.